Polymorphism in OOPs is inseparable and essential component of every object-oriented programming language. In this session, I'm going to be explaining polymorphism in OOP with C-sharp examples. Let's get started. Welcome back. So what are the objectives we are going to be looking at in this session? Number one is to define what polymorphism is all about. Also, to discuss the two main types of polymorphism, which are namely dynamic binding or runtime and static binding or compile time. We are also going to be looking at the differences between types of polymorphism and demonstration using C. -sharp. Polymorphism is the method in an object oriented programming language that performs different things as per the object class, which calls it. With polymorphism, a message is sent to multiple class objects and every object responds appropriately according to the properties of the class. As the word suggests, poly means many and more points as forms. Thus, polymorphism as a whole would mean a property of having many forms. The object oriented programming language processes classes and objects by a single interface. It implements the concept of function overloading, overriding, and virtual functions. Also, it is typically used for instrumenting inheritance in programming. What are the types of polymorphism in uh, object-oriented programming? Number one, we have the static binding or compile time polymorphism, for example, method overloading. Two, we have dynamic binding or runtime polymorphism, which is method overriding. With method overloading, static polymorphism is achieved in object-oriented programming languages that allow the programmer to implement various methods. The name they use can be the same, but their parameters are different. Certain conditions are conducive for static polymorphism. One, types of all parameters should be different. The sequence of the parameters can be different. The number of parameters of one method should differ from the other method. In the static binding polymorphism, the matching type and number of arguments invoke the overloaded function. As all of this information is available during the compile time, the compiler select the appropriate function. The function overloading does it, and operator overloading is also termed as static binding or early binding. In the displayed example of overloading, there are three methods with the same name, but each method differs in number of parameters and also type of parameter. One of the common examples of method overloading is formatting a string using the format method. The string can be formatted using various input types such as int, double, numbers, char, and other strings. Not worthy. Can you overload a method based on different return type? The answer is no. Why? Compiler does not allow just return type to separate one method from other with the same name. In the dynamic polymorphism, a call to a single overriding method is solved during a program's runtime. Method overriding is one of the prominent examples of runtime polymorphism. In this process, the overriding is done through pointers and virtual functions. In method overriding, a single method is declared in a subclass present in a parent class. The child class gains a method for implementation. During runtime polymorphism, a class offers the specification of its own to another inherited method. This transfer between methods is achieved without modifying the parent class object's codes. An example of overriding display, the result of the balance method can be 10 of 500. The above code declares two classes, account and amount. The amount class is inherited from the account class. Method balance is overridden in the amount class. The value of the balance method will be decided based on the color program and its use of this class or derived class. 
What are the differences between compile time and runtime polymorphism? One, invoking of functions. The function in compile time polymorphism is invoked at the compile time, while the function for runtime polymorphism is invoked at runtime. Common terms. It is known as overloading, early bindings, and static bindings. And for runtime, it is known as overriding, late binding, and dynamic binding. Method name and parameters. In overloading, more than one method has the same name, but with a different number or type of parameter. In overriding, more than one method has the same name, number, and type of parameters. It is achieved with function and operator overloading. Runtime polymorphism is achieved with virtual function and pointers. Execution time. For compile time polymorphism, it executes faster than runtime polymorphism at the compile time. For runtime polymorphism, it executes slower than compile time polymorphism at runtime. Now, let's take a look at some demonstration of overloading and overriding. I'm going to be demonstrating using .NET Fidu. In case you don't have Visual Studio, you can easily go online to use .NET Fidu to do some practical with respect to overloading and overriding. To start with, let's declare our class. We can now establish our method.
can see result one produces three that's which is a plus b and result two produces c same method different method with same name this is a simple demonstration of overloading if you have any question please kindly drop it at the comment section i will attend to them and if you have not subscribed to my channel please kindly do so thank you now let's demonstrate overriding so let's declare our class public class account and we are going to have another class inheriting from account If we come here, So, to test, So if we run this method, we realize that method A, which is the account, give us 50. Why the inherited method, which is the amount, give us 500. So this is a pretty simple demonstration of how overriding work. You can continue and on and on and on just to get the grasp of 
eyes works. So what are the benefits of polymorphism? One, with polymorphism, the user can remove the tested classes and code. It is useful in studying the programming by itself. Secondly, it also allows the user to store multiple different types of variables, such as double, float, int, or long, in a single variable to make it simpler to search and implement. If you enjoyed this video, please kindly like my video and subscribe. Thank you.